Tyco International is planning to break itself into three publicly traded companies, the separation is going to create standalone companies for ADT's North American Residential Security Unit, Flow Control, and the world's biggest commercial security and fire systems division. Indeed, a Bloomberg Fast Fact shows and that uh, Tyco International responds to 200,000 alarms every day. So will the three companies look more attractive to potential suitors on their own than as pieces of an industrial conglomerate. And joining us now to help us make some sense of all this, we have Nick Heyman. He covers the stock for William Blair and Company. He has an outperform rating on the shares. He knows everything about the industrial sector. Good to have you with us, Nick, as always. Good to be here, Pam. All right, so what's going on with Tyco? Ed Breen, he finally sort of caps his career there at Tyco by splitting up the company into three publicly traded units. This follows, he did two other spinoffs. Right. Out of Tyco, right? Iconic and healthcare. Right. In 2006. Covidian, that was one, right? Right. And the TE connectivity business. Exactly. Yeah. Why is he doing this? I think he's basically done all he can do uh, with you know them as an integrated part of a multi-industry conglomerate. And when you look at the different businesses, they're pretty unique. ADT is, in a North American residential is very recurring revenue base, 90 percent all North America. In contrast, flow control is one-third emerging markets. It's only 45% in aftermarket service and recurring. And both of those have huge opportunities for consolidation in still very fragmented markets. If they're the biggest and the best run in their space, they should have the best currency if they're standing alone. And uh, meanwhile, you have the commercial uh, fire and security business, which actually is global. Um, and um, that business may itself be a candidate to be acquired. So it's going to be easier after the spinoff for someone else to come in and maybe offer to buy one, two, or even all three of the different divisions, obviously depending upon their own strategy. They were pretty divergent. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was some discussion about Schneider having an interest last uh, right. earlier this year. And I think that this case clearly makes it easier if you want one piece. Certainly most people that were interested in the fire or in security side, whether it's residential or commercial, probably weren't that interested in the... Um, they, they flow control The flow size. control, right. But there, if someone is interested in emerging markets, you can look at the flow control business separately now. Ultra long, you know, lead cycle, lead, late, late uh, cycle businesses that are very, very geared towards, you know, emerging market infrastructure. What about the actual shares? Should people be buying the shares now that everybody knows that this is what Breen wants to do? I mean, he talked about the dividend. He said they're going to maintain the dividend. Yep. They are probably going to continue to pay the dividend, albeit in three separate tranches right. because of the three separate companies. And I think there's, what, about $700 million left to do in the stock That's buyback correct. program. And they hadn't bought any this quarter. No. And so they'll restart that imminently. So there's some certainty support near term. You know, we're all waiting the key data that will be filed post their uh, earnings on uh, November 16th. So that'll be when you get a first chance to really shake the value of these out. We think it's on a break up $60, $65 a share. Underlying fundamentals should warrant something in the mid 50s. So you still like the stock right now? I still like the stock a lot. It's a really good stock and it's both offensive and defensive in a pretty choppy environment. What does it say about the way Wall Street values companies that they don't like conglomerates? We're kind of done with that, aren't we? We're pretty much increasingly done with it. They want to have uh, global dominance in a you know niche market so that you can play either the emerging markets or you can play the recurring revenue streams that give you the predictability and security in an unsure you know environment but they don't want them all mixed together and if you've optimized what you can do with them in the conglomerate form it's probably time to take them apart nick tell me what's going on with united technologies and the possible purchase of goodrich well, you know, we don't have anything definitive, but we do know that uh, they certainly indicated earlier this summer uh, when they appointed Bill Brown, head of uh, corporate development, um, to really look in much harder at acquisitions. And clearly, I think um, the company at this point would like to add on to their aerospace franchise. Uh, why, why is being in the aerospace business so good right now? Well, you got three or four years of uh, higher build rates on the uh, new OEM side. And uh, the replacement market is very strong. There's a lot of maintenance and repair for older fleets that have to be, you know, outplaced. And um, you've got emerging market growth, which is uh, with rising standard of living, giving rise to uh, greater RPM growth in those emerging markets. So you've got a lot of new airlines that want to buy smaller, uh, narrow-bodied fleets. So it's a pretty active uh, decade for uh, the airspace and good visibility, decent pricing. And with Goodrich, you're getting landing systems, right? And uh, original equipment manufacturers, they want 
Goodrich to be there to service those landing systems. Yeah, it's a good fit with Hamilton Sunstrand, which makes a tremendous amount of the aerospace components, air handling systems, constant speed drives, auxiliary power units that all go into the components for an aircraft. So it'd be a good fit. You have brakes, which are always used every time a plane lands, and you have landing gears, which are certainly put on aircraft when they're built. What about the cost? How much is this going to cost United Technology? Since apparently there was already the news about UTX lining up the financing for some kind of acquisition. It's definitely more than they paid for the uh, security business from GE. Um, I think that this uh, makes a lot of sense. It, uh, depending on what the price, the pricing is stock to be 115 to 125 dollars a share for Goodrich, someplace in the neighborhood of uh, you know 45 to 60 cents in uh, incremental earnings in 2012, uh, to be accretive. Uh, on an EBITDA multiple basis, 17 to 19 times. But it's more than UTX is usually willing to pay. Historically a bit more, but it's an exceptional franchise, one that's actually growing, even with defense cuts, in defense. So pretty unusual in that sense, too. Any update you can give me on the geared turbofan? I always love to ask you about what's going on with the geared turbofan engine from UTX. Geared turbofan right now, we're waiting to hear whether or not they'll participate on the largest aircraft order ever. That was the American $40 billion order. Right. The 737 piece went to GE as under contract uh, to supply the engines for Boeing on that airframe. But on the uh, A320, there's 260 of them. Half of them are brand new regular, and half of them are re-engined NEOs. And that was supposed to be sorted out about September 1st. And so far, no news. Ah, all Big right. order. Four Big order, dollars. exactly. Yeah, yeah. $4 well, worth of engines. All right, well, keep us up to date on it. See, I knew you knew everything about industrial companies. I want to thank you very much. Nick Heyman joining us from Thanks, William ben. Blair and Company, talking about United Technologies, Goodrich, and the spinoff of Tyco.